Hello everyone, I am the Comics Kid 2099 here to do an audio commentary on an episode of Avatar The Last Airbender. Today I will be talking about episode 5 of book 1, The King of Omashu. Uh, so go ahead and uh, if you have this episode on Blu-ray or DVD, uh, put it in your player or your computer and uh, go ahead and select the episode and put it on timestamp uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, all the zeros. And then uh, whenever I say play here in a few minutes, you will go ahead and click play. And then we will all be on the same wavelength and I can watch it along with you. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and click play now. Uh, so while we're about to go through the opening here, uh, one thing that I remember watching this series uh, before I ever got it on DVD, watching it on Nickelodeon uh, as it would air, uh, you would always have the previously on Avatar. And uh, I, for the longest time, always thought that that was Uncle Iroh saying previously on Avatar. And then uh, as we see avatar roku here bending elements uh my sister one time informed me no that's actually avatar roku saying previously on avatar and that blew my mind a little bit and uh, i was still a little bit wary i wasn't entirely sure if that was true because avatar roku was not in the show all the time whereas uh uh, Uncle Iroh was uh, in it almost every episode, and so uh, I was a little bit surprised uh, to hear that, but uh, I was wrong. Uh, I'm uh, willing to admit when I'm wrong every now and then. Uh, so uh, this episode, uh, it does uh, delve into Aang's past a little bit, uh, and uh, I'm happy to see it. Uh, as I mentioned a few commentaries ago, a lot of these episodes, I haven't seen them in a very long time. Uh, this one, uh, I remember enjoying it. I remember it has some fun moments in it. Uh, but uh, as is always the case, whenever you're diving into Aang's backstory, uh, it's a little bit tricky because he has a pretty tragic backstory. Everyone that he knows is dead, or so he thinks. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, but uh, he's also a pretty jovial guy here in the present day. And so uh, it's kind of difficult to... Uh, balance that to have a uh, fun uh, fun loving guy in the present day but also <laughs> I forgot about this bit where he's dressed up as the old man uh, that's funny what he just did but then it gets really funny when they actually get to the city gates um, oh this may be the first time that we see the cabbage guy um, if you're watching along with me let's go ahead and keep count of every time we see the cabbage guy because I think this is the first time uh, now I like seeing the cabbage guy in this series but then uh, whenever we got to uh, the legend of Korra yep there he is all right here we go uh... <laughs> okay uh, that's pretty good that's good so yeah that's the first time we see him let's keep count of how many times we see him over the course of this series but uh, in the legend of Korra we actually had a statue commemorating him and while I now come on guys he's an old man allegedly you don't have to threaten to crush him with a boulder um, also they throw a dude's cabbage cart off the cliff, but then they let these guys just walk on in with nary a word. That's anyway, that's okay. Um, it's, it's a kid's show. Um, I didn't necessarily have to have the cabbage guy commemorated with a statue in the legend of Korra, uh, especially when, uh, at least early on, there were characters in the show that I liked a whole lot more than say Katara. And I mentioned a few episodes ago, I wasn't a huge fan of Katara. We never do get to see, uh, Toph until much later in the series, uh, but then like we get a statue of the Cabbage Guy. Uh, but anyway, that's okay. Uh, I'm not talking about Legend of Korra. I'm talking about Avatar right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really like uh, how Aang plays his old manness uh, right there. That's they are serious about. Of course, as we know, uh, the Earth Kingdom uh, was besieged uh, in. Uh, <laughs> Uh, not uh, not Omashu, but uh, Ba Sing Se was besieged uh, in the past. Actually, I don't know if we know that or not. I can't remember when we find out that... I want to say that uh, Admiral Zhao said something to Iroh about uh, besieging Ba Sing Se back in the day, but I can't remember if he actually said that in the episode. Uh, and you know what? I just uh, watched that one not too long ago. I should remember that, but I don't. Um, that's a really good animated face right there. Uh, I really like whenever they're able to make a character have a kind of, not necessarily a creepy face, but have a little bit of a sinister, uh, 
uh, grimace, if you will, uh, whenever Aang kind of narrows his eyes a little bit. I, I like the way that's animated. It looks really good. Um, so uh, we are told, uh, I don't know if we're ever told this in the series, but I know in extra features, uh, some of the people who worked on the show said that the Avatar uh, has a much longer life than the average bear. Uh, I think we were told that Avatar Kiyoshi lived like 160-something years. Um, and so uh, it makes sense for someone like the Avatar, someone with Avatar powers, to live a really long time. And I'm going to go ahead and spoil this if you've never seen this episode, which if you are listening to this commentary, I'm assuming you have seen the episode before, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. The comedic timing here is great. Um, anyway, uh, so Boomy somehow is still alive 100 years later. He's like 112, 113, uh, and he's not an Avatar. Um, that... I don't think that's ever explained, but, oh, speaking of comedic timing, uh, this is good, but then when they land briefly in the person's apartment, um, oh, no, this is it, I, where it, it does a little freeze frame there, that was, that was really good, um, I thought they went in someone's apartment, too, but I could be wrong, um, <laughs> okay, this is really good, um, Sometimes you're just going to hear me say, hey, this is a really funny episode, and uh, this may be one of those. Um, I was 100% sure they had actually, like, gone through a window, went through someone's apartment, and then... <laughs> and then did it, like, went out, though. But maybe I'm just thinking of whenever they, uh, when they were, the soldiers were training. Oh, wait, no, this may be it. Uh, yep, this is it, okay. I was thinking this right here where they went through his apartment, that that was where we did the little freeze frame, but it was earlier that we saw that. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, and then I think we find out, because the Legend of Korra is only like, what is it, 60 years? Now, how did he get in the city? Okay, that's okay. Uh, it's funny. Um, rule of funny trumps rule of logic. I'll go ahead and say that. The second time that he says my cabbages. Um, <laughs> um, so... I think Aang only lived, I th he dies, like, now I wish I had, like, my phone with me, I don't have it, but uh, I believe The Legend of Korra is, like, 70 years after the events of this series, and so Aang lives about 60-ish years after this, um, and we are told the reason that he uh, doesn't live as long as, say, Kyoshi is because he used up a lot of his avatar power uh, in the ice cube, or in the ice... Uh, glacier thing and so um that i guess that makes sense um still doesn't really explain why <laughs> still doesn't explain why uh uh boomy is still alive so 112 and still kicking uh but that's okay uh, i don't necessarily need an explanation for that um now this is uh we get to see like dead a dead animal and not not just like you know sausage patties but like an actual dead pig on the table i'm kind of surprised that nickelodeon that they were able to get away with that on a children's network. Um, uh, what kind of horns are those? I I can't tell if those are supposed to be horns or like rabbit ears, because he does have a pet rabbit, but uh, they look kind of like horns too, so I don't know. Um, yeah, there's a dead pig right there. I'm kind of surprised. And dead fish. Um, I don't know what they're allowed to to get away with on a cartoon like that. Because I know some networks have wildly different standards and practices. Uh, I know that uh, I was listening to, this isn't a cartoon, but uh, I was listening to a commentary on, uh, I think, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And somebody on that show said that their spouse worked on Friends. And that in Friends, they were allowed to, no, no, in Buffy, they were allowed to get away with saying something that they weren't allowed to get away with in Friends. Uh-oh, you've been caught, Aang. Wah, wah, wah. Yep, not just any airbender, because there's only one. Duh. <laughs> so anyway, though, but I don't know, like, if this had been on Disney, would they have been allowed to show a dead pig on the table? I, you know, I don't know. That's a question I cannot answer, because I've never worked at a animation studio. Uh, about to take some a sip of this orange juice, guys, if you'll excuse me for a second. Yeah, you got to give these guys their credit. They're good at their job. 
<laughs> I, I like Boomy. I think if we had had him in every episode, this might have this kind of humor might have gotten old. But once in a blue moon, I, I thought this was pretty funny. <laughs> this bit with the the chambers, the new refurbished changer, that that's pretty good too. Um, so. I'm curious uh, if, they, and I can't remember if I mentioned this whenever I was doing a commentary on the previous episodes, but I'm curious if they're ever going to do another cartoon set in this world because um, I I never did finish watching The Legend of Korra. Not necessarily, uh, I, I didn't have anything against the show. Um, that was when that show first started. That was right around the point when uh, my sister, she moved. And so we tried to, I, I would postpone watching episodes until she would come to visit. So we'd sometimes watch five episodes when she'd come to visit. And it got to where it was just more difficult to uh, watch the episodes. Uh, her visits uh, became a little more infrequent because uh, she moved further away. And so uh, it got to where I didn't finish watching the series. Uh, I only got through... I believe book two of the Legend of Korra, and I can't remember how many books there were. Oh, he's too fat, guys. Oh, this is animal cruelty. Come on now. Um, anyway, uh, so I never did watch, uh, finish watching the Legend of Korra, and I didn't like it as much as I liked this series. I'll go ahead and say that, but I didn't stop watching it because of raw feelings towards it. I'll just say that also, but um, I do think it'd be cool if we could get another series set in this world, um, maybe not even necessarily further in the future. I wouldn't have to have something that is, uh, uh-oh, they're gone, Aang. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't have to have something that is set further in the future because one thing I wasn't as keen on was uh, technological developments in this world, like uh, you had automobiles in The Legend of Korra, so I wouldn't have to see them go further with that. Uh, I think it'd be cool if you could do something something maybe set in between uh, Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, uh, and not necessarily featuring all of these characters. Uh, you could do something set in Ba Sing Se uh, before it becomes, uh, what was the name of the city? Republic City? Did Ba Sing Se become Republic City, or was it something else that I don't remember. I, obviously, you can't answer me right now, but uh, maybe you could do something set in that city before uh, the events of Legend of Korra, but I don't know. Uh, I believe right now, uh, what are their names? Uh, DiMartino and uh, the other guy, Konitsko. Brian Konitsko and Michael DiMartino. I believe they are working on gr original graphic novels set in the world of Avatar and The Legend of Korra. Um, but they are not working on anything in animation at the moment. Um, but if you guys are fans of this series, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of going all over the place right now. If you guys like this series, I would recommend The Dragon Prince if you have Netflix. Uh, there's two short seasons right now as I record this episode. I enjoy that series. Uh, it's uh, at the moment, uh, a little difficult to kind of figure out where I'm going to stand with it when it's all said and done. Uh, but uh, at the moment, two seasons have come out, and I enjoy what we've had from it. And uh, it's got a couple of Avatar alumni who have worked on it. So uh, it's going to be uh, kind of sort of a similar experience as what you're getting here. Very different, because with Avatar, you've got a whole lot of standalone episodes and an arc that doesn't feature as heavily in each episode, whereas in The Dragon Prince, the arc features a lot more heavily in each episode, uh, also because you have shorter seasons, so the arc is... Ooh, ooh, that hurts me just looking at that. Um, that rock is moving pretty fast there on Sokka and Katara. Is anyone else getting uh, flashes of The Dark Knight Rises where uh, Bruce kept trying to climb out of the pit? Um, we got to see it multiple times, I... At least Aang is trying a different strategy here uh, each time. Ooh, ow! Come on now, guys. Psychosomatic pain here. I can't remember exactly what Boomy's strategy was here, why he was doing this. I know it has something to do with... Uh, uh, uh. There we go. It didn't even take him that long. I think it took Bruce that much time just to do one attempt to get out of the pit. Of course, there's still like 10 minutes left of the episode. Aww. 
That's a cute rabbit. I don't normally like rabbits in real life, in real life, but that thing is cute. Oh, that one, that one's a little scarier. Now I don't remember, because obviously the big giant rabbit is Flopsy. Uh, I don't remember what it is that makes Aang realize that that is Flopsy. And also, I feel like there was. Because this is test number two. Is You would think there'd be three. Okay, yeah, what made him realize this is Flopsy? He doesn't... I don't know what it is that made him... He just kind of says it. Um, I don't think there's any, like, detective work of any kind. Like, there's no clues that make him realize that that's Flopsy. Oh. Okay, but there is going to be a third test, I think. And now I'm... Uh, Yeah, Katara, we get it. You, you're you're uncomfortable. It's not Aang's fault. Well, I guess it's kind of Aang's fault because he airbended when they were trying to stay undercover. But still, um, uh, is this? Yep, another test. I knew it. I couldn't remember what the. Uh, oh, how could I forget? Yeah, there is a third test, and I kind of feel silly for forgetting that this was the one. Um, that guy looks like a firebender, or at least he looked like he was from the Fire Nation. This guy looks Earth King to me. Yeah, this guy over here on the left, he's got, like, some red coloration on his costume, and he's got the scar and the hair, so I kind of got the feeling he was from a Fire Nation at one time, but um, maybe not. I don't know. His clothes are... Uh... Oh, dang. Yeah, Boomy is, like, at least 112, and then look at him. He looks like, I don't know... Brock Lesnar or something. Um, no one even said that the match had started, Boomy. That was that's just not shuttlecock now, dear boy. Um, now what would what would Boomy have done if he just like beat Aang to a pulp? If Aang was like a terrible fighter, like just bruised the Avatar beyond repair, and it's like, oh, I thought I was training him a lesson. Um, so as far as Boomy knows, Aang hasn't had hardly any training at all, um, and and I can't remember if if Boomy met Aang before he was the Avatar or after he became the Avatar. Because in the uh, episode, The Southern Air Temple, it gives me the impression that Aang finds out that he's the Avatar and then not much long after that, he runs away. But it could have been months after he found out that he was the Avatar when he finally ran away. And in that time, he traveled the world a little bit and met Boomy. That is possible. Uh, but I didn't, that wasn't the impression that I got watching the Southern Air Temple. So uh, I guess we're just uh, going to have to choose for ourselves. Because um, I guess it's also possible that Boomy met Aang before... Well, I don't know. What, what reason would someone who's not the Avatar have for going to Omashu? Uh, he would have to have been the Avatar, right? Like, there's no reason that just some normal airbending kid would go to Umashu unless he was the Avatar. Um, now, I do think it's a little odd here that Boomy is going out of his way to teach Aang a lesson here, but then in season, or book two, whenever Aang needs an earthbending teacher, at that point, uh, Boomy doesn't seem as interested in teaching Aang. Um, that's a little odd, but I guess at that point they realized, hey... We're going to need to find a teacher for Aang. We don't want it to be Boomy. We want, you know, because I'm pretty sure even this early in the series, they had a pretty good idea what they wanted to do, at least with, uh, with Toph. Uh, I don't think they had everything in the series worked out. Like, uh, you know, Zuko is going to join the group and Aang is going to spirit bend him. I don't think they had all of that worked out, but uh, I think they definitely had the idea of Toph already because uh, we see her at one point in this season, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe, no. No, I don't know if we... Now I'm going to have to look and see, because uh, it's uh, it's the episode where Aang is hallucinating in the, the forest, and he sees uh, Toph, but she's wearing her... Uh, her dress, and she's, you know, dressed like she was before she ran away from home. Um, and he sees a hallucination of her before he ever meets her, and I can't remember if that's like, towards the latter half of this season, or if that's in 
the beginning of season two. Um, you haven't beaten me. You sacrificed a sure footing for a killing stroke. Ah, uh, that quote was appropriate, guys. That's two Nolan Batman movies in one episode. You come to my channel for one thing, and that's no one Batman quotes, right? I guess that's, you know, easier to go underground, but you could have just, like, elevated yourself up with a big rock elevator thing. Come on now. Yeah, that isn't fair, Boomy. What if Aang had gotten hit on the head and had amnesia? Then Sokka and Katara would be dead. Mm, I wish you guys could taste that orange juice. It's really good. My name is Khan. That's something that you guys might not know what I'm talking about unless you're watching the episode with me. Boomy just asked, what's my name? I'll, I'll give you context for that one. Um, ah, Rocky. <laughs> okay. That was good, Sokka. I'll give you that one. That was really good. <laughs> Don't go chasing waterfalls. I should have sang that whenever he was trying to get the key. I was too busy giving you no one Batman quotes. Ah. I'd still like to know how you re figured out the giant rabbit was Flopsy. Wait, so Boomy like walks away while these two are about to die of rock suffocation. He goes to get dressed and shower, probably, and he couldn't have just, like, stuck around for Aang to answer his question. It's Boomy! I've only spoiled it a thousand times talking about this episode. You haven't either, Aang. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, wait. I'm, I messed up that joke. I'm sorry, guys. I failed you. I should have said, Boomy, you haven't changed. Yeah. You knew what I meant. Geomite. So I wonder if that actually tastes like candy. Like, Boomy just ate it, but he's also an earthbender, so he could have just, like, and his teeth are all gone. So, like, maybe it is candy. Maybe that's what rotted his teeth away. Ah. <laughs> he, yeah. So why didn't you teach him earthbending when it was time? Of course, the answer to that is the guys making the series wanted to... Find a different earthbending teacher, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm curious if there ever was an avatar who decided to go out of order in learning the elements. Aang does try. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. That was the worst. Um, Aang does try in this series, I think, in this season. He, he tries to learn firebending before he's mastered waterbending, but um, I can't remember. I, I'm, I'm wanting to say there was. I don't know. I think when we get to Ko the face. Stealer, we find out a lot more about some of the other avatars, and I want to say that ah, I forgot that they ended the episode with that. Well played episode. That was good. We didn't get Zuko or Iroh in this one. That was I, I, I guess not every episode has to have them. Well, anyway, um, I hope that you guys enjoyed listening to me on this one. I enjoyed uh, giving you the commentary, uh, giving it to you as I always do, Andrea Romano, DCA Animated Universe alumni. I'm trying to see if Giancarlo Volpe works on this episode, because he's worked on one of them before, and he is uh, possibly well-known by you guys as uh, a, a co-executive producer on uh, Green Lantern, the animated series. I don't think he worked on this episode. I don't think he worked on every episode, so uh, that's okay. Um, well, uh, with that being said, I will see you guys next week with another commentary. In the meantime, have a great rest of the day. Catch you later. Bye.